Hi, this is Simon Obstel, and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we'll be taking a look at building this interesting chromatic aberration effect. Now, I will be turning this into a template that I will share with you in a separate video. But for now, let's look at how it all works. OK, for this project, I'm going with 3840 by 2160. The frame rate and duration don't matter too much but I'm going with 24 frames a second and a duration of five seconds, if you are interested. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import my image. So this is from pexels.com. I will give you a link in the description. And it looks like this. So I'm just going to scale it up so it fits something like this. The first thing I want to point out is that Motion does in fact have its own chromatic aberration filter, and that is under Blur, and it's called Prism. And let's increase the amount a lot so we can see what's going on. We can adjust the angle like this, all very nice. But what is actually happening is that it's just a directional blur. You can see that if I really increase that, I just kind of blurring in one direction. And I think we can do something a bit nicer. So that's what we're going to do. So let's delete this. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a clone of this group. So make clone layer. And I'm going to duplicate that clone a couple of times. So right click, duplicate. I'm going to select all three of those clones. I'm going to come to filters and color and channel mixer. So essentially what we need to do for chromatic aberration is to separate the red, green and blue channels, offset them and then recombine them. So let's look at that. So I'm going to start at the top here and I want to isolate the red. So I can do that by turning the green, green to zero and the blue, blue to zero. So let's just turn off this layer. Let's work on the next one down. Let's make this green by turning off the red, red and the blue, blue. Disable that for a second. And then let's look at the blue, which we can achieve by turning off the red, red and the green, green. And then we can turn them back on again. And if we select the red and the green and come to their blend mode and set that to add, you'll see that we're back to our original image. So this top group is our split version. If I turn that off, you can see it's identical to our original image. And if we offset these layers, you can see the aberration look starting to happen. So let's just undo that, because what I actually want to do is not offset them in position, but offset them in rotation. And I'm going to do that by means of a slider. So I'm just going to offset the, the red and the green. There's no point in offsetting all three channels. So. I'm going to add the green rotation to a new rig, add to new slider, and I'm going to do the same for the red. So add the rotation to the slider. Let's come to the slider controls, and let's start off by setting a minimum range, and I'm going to go with negative 100 for that. So we're going from negative 100 to positive 100. So for this minimum value, let's go for 10 and negative 10 for those two there. And let's come to the other end of the slider and do negative 10 and plus 10. And then you can see that we can create this nice sort of lens offset. I, th I think just rotating it is better than offsetting it on X and Y. So I think that's much more the sort of look you'd get with a lens. So the next thing we're going to do is we get, are going to select this group and we are going to apply a zoom blur to it. And this is where it's going to look, I think, nicer than the, the prism blur, because we're getting that sort of really rather dramatic way of blending those layers. And we can increase that zoom blur a lot if we want. But I think let's just set it to something like four for the time being. And let's also make sure to turn on crop. I think that's probably quite important like that. The other thing that's going to make this look nice, I think, is if we isolate a central area that is not being affected. So let's select our group. Let's come down to the circle mask and I'm just going to roughly draw an ellipse over my character here. And if we come to the mask and we invert it and then feather it, let's just turn off the overlays briefly. You can see that's actually a really nice effect because he is nice and clean, but we're getting this really dramatic chromatic blur on the outside. So that is essentially the effect. 
And just to make it a little bit more useful, what we really want to be able to do is to link the circle mask center to the zoom blur center. So if I turn on the zoom blur center, we really want the zoom blur to kind of come out of the center of the mask, as it were. So we can do that by coming to the circle mask and its position. Let's just reset its position while we set this up. So I'm going to link the X, add parameter behavior link to this group. And then I'm going to select filters and zoom blur and center X. Now you'll see that it's popped over to the side there, and that's because of the coordinate system of the filter. And we need to counter that by entering negative 0.5 for the X offset. And now we're good for the X. So we just need to do the same thing for the Y. So add parameter behavior link, select the group for the source parameter, select the filter, zoom blur, center, and Y. Again, you see it's popped up to the top there, and we just need to offset it again, negative 0.5 on Y. And now, if we select the zoom blur, and with our overlays turned on, you'll see that the mask and the zoom blur are in sync with each other, and that's really useful. And if we wanted to publish this as an effect, we could turn on Publish OSC, and that on-screen control will be available in Final Cut. And indeed, the zoom blur amount is attached to it, you see, so that's doubly useful there. So I won't go through the business of actually turning this into a template, but I will actually turn it into a template and publish a separate video with a link to that template and a description of how it all works in Final Cut. So I hope that's been interesting. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.